Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah. It's Thursday. We're on the downhill side of the week yet again. Super exciting. Wind looks to have calmed down finally. Uh, I'm not going to get outside today because I've got some spin ups that I'm going to do on the indoor trainer. It's actually a little bit colder today. Roads are a little bit damp. Uh, it rained a little overnight here. But uh, it was crazy yesterday. Uh, there are friends of mine that I work with that don't have power at their houses still because of downed trees and damage. They're going to have power like at midnight tonight, which is intense. For some reason, I'm going to find the nearest piece of wood. And uh, I've lived in this apartment in this village for, it is now eight years. January of this year was eight years. And I have never had a power outage um, other than they turn the power off for maintenance on the, um, the boxes downstairs. But in terms of an actual power outage, I've never had more than a quick brownout here. So I don't know what they've been doing with the grid in this village area, but kudos to them because I have never been out of power. I mean, even during this massive snowstorm where things were collapsing and people didn't have power all over the place, somehow I've always managed to have power, keep power. I'm sure my luck will run out soon, but right now, I've got the lights on. But at any rate, let's get started with the day. I've mentioned before that I live in a very old building. This building is definitely over 100 years old. Uh, the village I live in is a very old village, so most of these houses and buildings are old. It's interesting because if you drive around, you can go through some suburban towns where every third house is the same. Every house around here is pretty unique. Um, they don't really look the same. Now, it doesn't mean that they don't follow the same floor plan on the inside, but generally if you find houses and uh, developments around here that were built kind of like in the 60s or later, you'll find kind of a cookie cutter. Every third the fourth house is the same, like on my mom's street. Every third the fourth house follows the same layout. Now, some people may put additions and add-ons and stuff like that, but around here they're all very unique, which is very cool. They have a lot of character, but they are old. A friend I work with lives in an apartment, and we were commiserating yesterday because she doesn't have, like, no switches in the apartment like I do, very few outlets, uh, pull chains on a lot of the old fixtures and stuff like that. It's just from a different age. So a lot of these houses weren't designed with modern amenities. Like this closet behind me, um, there was no, like, rails in the closet, so somebody had somewhere along the way put kind of a sa space saver which is an absolute nightmare right now which i have to reorganize i got to get some totes up there and, and do a bit of a project but right now everything is hung from kind of these wire racks with this rail here and i just have a lot of clothes i like to hang my clothes i could fold them and put them in the dresser but i prefer that my sweaters uh collared shirts things like that i like to hang most of my shirts that aren't like a hoodie or, you know, I'll fold my pants and things like that. But because of the lack of space here and it cuts a corner, I wanted to save some space. And yeah, I have, I have too many shirts, but I put them all in the rotation. I own too much black. Anyway, um, so I put these in today. These are the space savers and they really work. This was packed solid with uh, clothing and I couldn't fit the rest of these clothes in the closet anymore because as I kind of pick up a few, you know, separates for work, different collared shirts, take things in, in the rotation, put their take things out of the rotation, put things in the rotation. Uh, eventually I run out of room or the clothes get crushed together. So I'm actually gonna buy a few more sets of those. They came in a package of eight and I like them. Um, they hang nice. They fit most standard size hangers, stuff like this. Uh, they don't fit, I don't even have any here, but the ones that you kind of get this from the store, the real thick plastic hangers that you might get when you buy something from a department store, those don't fit on there, but a traditional hanger will. But I like them. They're awesome. So I'll probably buy a couple more packages of those and fix up my closet, which is super exciting for you, I know. You're concerned with my closet habits, but I have a package waiting for me downstairs, so I'm gonna go pick that up. All right, so know what this is. A little bit of cart before the horse, so to speak. Uh, my GoPro is coming at some point. I think before Monday or Tuesday was the uh, estimated time of arrival, but I picked up a few peripherals for the GoPros. Um, 
so I picked up another one of these. I had a, or have, a 12 hour battery, uh, extended battery pack for my Hero 3 Plus, but it's huge. It has a profile that's just pretty unwieldy for uh, anything other than maybe keeping it fixed in an area. All right, learn to open a box, jackass. It's an interesting box, but I'll try to open this up. So this one's a six hour one. It's got a slimmer profile. I'm also getting the GoPro brand one. So I've got a couple so I can put one on each uh, GoPro if I have multiple ones on my bike. But it's still bulky, but it's definitely smaller than the other one. So uh, I'll be using this in the rotation if I have a longer ride plan and I just don't wanna constantly start and stop or change batteries, things like that comes with a charger. Uh, this company, I think the company's name is Refuel. I have a number of products from this brand for um, my cameras. Uh, Best Buy sells this brand. Good quality products. Um, a lot of their products are at par with the manufacturer's equipment if you're just getting like replacement batteries. So uh, definitely recommend them. And then I picked up one of these. Now, I don't think I'll be able to use this in racing. Um, there may be some safety considerations there, some concerns from the race organizers when they see this. But this is a skewer mount uh, for your GoPro. So this basically will sit on the outside of your quick release skewer and things will tighten up with looks like, looks like they're tightened up with hex keys and things like that. So you can tighten them up with a tool I'll have to figure out how to put this thing on as I rip the instructions, but I don't know if you can kind of see that there, but you basically replace the end cap of your skewer with the mount here, and then the GoPro goes on the end. Now, you gotta figure it looks something like this. So possibly at the rear, it probably wouldn't stick out much more than um, your uh, rear derailleur and up front, but I feel like this would be this would be a concern for a race organizer, um, especially if you're talking about like a crit or something like that, where you're kind of going to be in close quarters, getting this hung up in somebody else's uh, wheel if they get a little bit close or a little sketchy out there. So this will probably be reserved for more endurance rides or just kind of out and about. I'll see kind of how it plays out, but I'm kind of excited to get these two uh, implemented in my repertoire. Uh, I've seen a couple videos out there with um, mounts like this. It just has a pretty cool uh, perspective from the back. You can kind of see the pedal uh, and the road around you. And then from the front, you get you know the front of the wheel, especially with the wide angle lens on the GoPro or whatever action cam you have. So I'll get these introduced and hopefully add some pretty cool perspective footage to some uh, riding out there. So my team uses Castelli gear um, for our kits and I love it. Uh, it's comfortable, it's durable. Uh, we use the higher end uh, air tube pad, if you're familiar with that, uh, for the chamois. And they're definitely comfortable, they wear well, but they are expensive as hell. Um, we just did another kit order for my team and we get a bit of a discount. You get a discount as a team if you order kind of in lots of at least 10. Um, so it's a little bit cheaper than buying like the blank jerseys or like custom jerseys if you're just gonna order a single. So um, we just did our kit order and they changed the name of the women's team. They kind of split the men, women and the men off into separate teams this year and they changed the name. So I was gonna only order uh, a couple of new bibs this year, which was supposed to cost me around 300 bucks uh, just to add some more in the rotation. And we ended up changing our jersey so I had to buy two new jerseys and then they had some custom arm warmers this year that I wanted. I ended up spending $500 for two new full kits and a pair of arm warmers. And I'm just like, shit, <laughs> this is not money that I was expecting to spend, but nothing's better than new kit day. So probably in the next maybe four to six weeks, I'll be getting some new kits uh, from the shop, have some new stuff to wear. The good thing is that the general design is the same and the shop is still the same for right now. So... If I want to introduce these to the rotation, it's not like I'm wearing a different color or completely different kits. But I have to quit messing around because I need to get a quick hour ride in before I go to work today. Got a little extra sleep today that my body was asking for, so I obliged because I did. So, quick little Zwift ride and off to work. Somebody, somebody. Our ride 
check. Vitamins, check. Now it's time for work. use self-service gas there's pretty much mostly self-service gasoline pumps uh, everywhere in uh, Western New York and pretty much New York is a, a whole I think but um, I completely detest the uh, questionnaire you have to finish every single time you run a credit card through it's like a pain in the ass you can't just swipe your credit card anymore now you gotta is it debit or credit yes put in your zip code would you like a receipt before it even lets you pump the gas and it's just a pain in the ass because the transition time usually between these questions is just horrendous, but that's okay. But uh, I've actually been elsewhere in the country where there is like no self-service pumps. I think places in Pennsylvania, which is like a three or four hour ride from here, depending on where in Pennsylvania you go, most of their gas pumps are all full service. You can't actually pump your own gas, which is an interesting, I guess, paradigm shift for us being around here because we're all pretty accustomed to just doing that ourselves but where you guys live do you guys uh, pump your own gasoline or petrol or whatever you use in your area um, do you pump yourself or do are most of your uh, gas stations uh, full service I have literally hit every single red light on the way to work today apparently the wind grew tired of pissing us off because there's not a breath of air going on right now well apparently the work gods hurt me last night I asked for a fight. I got a fight today. Non-stop, beginning to end. Just couldn't get my work done because shit was real. Good times. At any rate, I'm going to get ready for bed. Start a new day Friday. Gearing up for the weekend, which is going to be blistering cold and just non-conducive to riding the bike. So that sucks. But hopefully I'll find myself some other adventures. But thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one.